Okay, so let us continue our discussion. So we are in the fifth week, and this week we are going to learn numerical solution. So if you recall the equation of motion, so equation of motion is mx double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to some f of t and then we also have some initial conditions. Till date what we have learned is how to solve this equation under different conditions. It may be free vibration, it may be forced vibration and when we talk about forced vibration then again there are different types of forces that we can encounter and for each of them we have derived the solution technique. Now, because this is a differential equation, we can also numerically solve this uh, differential equation. In fact, if you recall, when we developed a code for Duhamel integral, that time we uh, mentioned that we will come back to this point and we will verify the results that we get using uh, the code for Duhamel integral using some other technique. So, that is what we uh, end up with this numerical solution techniques. Of course, there are different numerical techniques available. Out of that, we will cover a few of them. So, the first one we will talk about is uh, uh, called Nigam and Jennings method. Then we will talk about central difference method. Then two important techniques, one is Wilson theta and another one is called Newmark beta. So, these are the different algorithms we will learn and in fact beyond that also there are many other uh, numerical techniques that is available in the literature and in fact uh, when we will in the third lecture, we will talk about the MATLAB implementations. We will also see how we can use inbuilt options in MATLAB that uses again another numerical technique called ODE solver. So, that is how different method uh, can offer you the solution. The ultimate objective is to find out what is x of t. Okay. So, let us first uh, focus on the numerical approach that we are going to adopt. So, if we see the forcing function f of t, it is numerically defined. So, if we have say a kind of some shape, so it is numerically defined means although it looks like a continuous variable, but we measure this at some discrete point. So, if you have say these two points, so we have the values of the forcing function. So, at this first point say this is T i, at this point the value of the forcing function is F i. Similarly, I have the next point T i plus 1. So, here it is F i plus 1 and that is how it continues as we change this i, then we have different values of T and for each values of T we record the forcing function. So, at this point we have this values of forcing function recorded. Now, you can see we have this function, the variation of this uh, forcing function can be actually modeled linearly because we have a very small time step. So, this is the time step. So, this is our say delta T i. Normally, in any numerical solution procedure, we normally keep this delta T i constant, but it can be anything. It can actually change from one time step to another. Now, if we consider say point at a distance tau from this initial point T i. Now, if we write a model for this forcing function, obviously it will be a linear model. So, f of tau will be what we can easily tell that this will be f i plus 
the total variation of forcing. So, at i th point we have this is our f i and then similarly at the i plus 1 we have this is the value. So, this is our delta f i. Now, this variation occurs where over a time step of delta t i. So, we have delta f i divided by delta t i times tau where what is delta f i? Is it is nothing but f i plus 1 minus f i. Okay. Now, obviously, if I want to solve this equation, what I have to do? I have to satisfy this equilibrium equation at every time point. So, if I consider a time point T i, then obviously, I have m x double dot at T i, I have this is as i and then plus C x i for the time being, let us not consider damping, we consider only stiffness force. So, undamped case times and it will satisfy that equilibrium. So, we have f of i, right. So, we consider for the time being, we consider on damped case. Now, we can also write down the same equilibrium equation at time point tau. So, we have x of tau, this is x double dot of tau and then finally, on the right hand side we have f tau. Now, what will be the forcing function then? We have on the left hand side m x double dot of tau plus k x of tau is equal to f i plus delta f i divided by delta t i times tau. And for this problem, we start from t i that is the initial point. So, what is given? Given x i and x i dot. So, these are the given conditions. Now, if you look at this equation, on the right hand side, we have forcing function f i which is defined at the ith time point. So, it is once it is defined by this discrete value, it is constant and then we have a function defined by this uh, delta f i by delta t i times tau. This is a kind of ramp force shown by this blue dotted line. Now, if you write down the equation, the solution x of t will be due to what? It will have three components obviously. The first one is free vibration with the initial conditions are defined at the initial point. Second one response due to constant force and the third one response due to ramp. So, all these three together will give us the total response, right. Okay, so, we can easily write down that expression for total response. So, tau will be what we know the solution x i cos omega n tau plus x i dot divided by omega n times 
sin omega n tau plus we have a constant force. So, F i divided by k times 1 minus cos of omega n tau. plus there is a ramp force. So, delta F i divided by k times tau y delta T i minus sin omega n tau divided by omega n delta T i. So, that is the total solution. Just note that we have no damping term here, we can easily extend it for damping that is not a problem. Uh, if we include damping obviously, its contribution will come and the expression will be a little bigger just uh, for the time being we avoid that and then we can easily derive that with the damping term. And not only that, let us also consider that this uh, time step is uh, constant. So, delta t remains constant. So, as we keep on changing time locations from i to i plus 1 and then i plus 1 to i plus 2 and so on, this delta t remains constant. Okay. Now, obviously, if we differentiate with respect to tau, what we will get? We will get x dot tau. Now, again this expression is what minus x i omega n sin omega n tau plus then we will have x i dot then if we differentiate this function we will have cos omega n tau plus we will have f i by k. Then obviously, we will have sin omega n tau and one omega n will come. So, omega n plus we will have delta f i by k and within bracket we will have uh, 1 by delta t and then here we have minus cos omega n tau divided by delta t. So, now we have the expression for um, x tau and x dot tau. So, next what we can do because these two expressions give us the displacement and velocity for every tau and if you look at the figure, the tau which is here, it actually starts from T i and goes up to T i plus 1. So, obviously, in place of tau, if we put delta t, what we can expect the solution x of tau will be at delta t. So, this is nothing but x i plus 1 and similarly x dot of tau will be x dot at i plus 1. So, the two expressions we have in these two expressions, if we put tau equal to delta t, then immediately what we will have is the solution that is displacement and velocity at uh, i plus 1. So, we will do that in a minute. So, let us see what we get. So, the solution x i plus 1 is x i cos omega n 
delta t plus x i dot divided by omega n sin omega n delta t plus f i by k within bracket 1 minus cos omega n delta t plus delta f i. So, let me write it down f i plus 1 minus f i divided by omega n k times delta t and then within bracket we will have omega n delta t then minus sin omega n delta t. So, that is the first expression. Similarly, if we write down x i plus 1 dot then what we will have? We will have omega n within bracket minus x i sin omega n delta t plus x i dot divided by omega n then cos omega n delta t plus we have f i divided by k times sin then omega n delta t plus we have these term. So, delta f i or we can write f i plus 1 minus f i divided by we have taken omega n common. So, omega n square k times delta t inside we will have omega n delta t minus sin omega n delta t. So, that is the solution. So, how do we get? We put tau is equal to delta t. Now, if you carefully look at the solution, what we have x i plus 1 and x i plus 1 dot both of them they depend on what x i then x i dot then f i and f i plus 1. If you look at this first expression you will see there are the different combinations and the coefficient of x i dot you can write say a and you can easily find out that coefficients. So, a x i plus b times x i dot plus c times f i plus d times f i plus 1. So, that is the displacement and in place of velocity also you can see a similar pattern. So, we have x i, x i dot, f i and f i plus 1 and their coefficients uh, we can follow the same notation, but with a prime. So, a prime, b prime, c prime and d prime. So, that is the solution for displacement and velocity at time point t i plus 1. So, that you can see. Obviously, what we have to find out? We have to find out these constants a, b, c, d and I am not writing the expression for a, b, c, d which is easily understandable. These are nothing but the coefficient. For example, x i has a coefficient of cos omega n delta t. So, value of this a is nothing but cos omega n delta t. Similarly, you can also write down the expression for b, c, d and then a prime, b prime, c prime and d prime. 
remember in this derivation we have not considered the damping term obviously if we consider damping term this basic structure will remain all the same the only change will occur in these coefficients a b c d and then a prime b prime c prime d prime so this technique actually gives you clear idea how to use the information available at the ith time point so we start with this information at the ith time point what informations we have we have displacement and velocity so for the states are concerned and then also we know the forcing function now using this information then what we can do we can find out what is the solution that is the displacement and velocity when we have t i plus 1 as we progress when we will develop this uh, um, algorithm in MATLAB I will give you the detailed expression for a b c d and a prime b prime c prime d prime when we consider damping. Nevertheless the derivation is pretty straightforward. So we started with the equilibrium equation at ith time point then we consider a linear variation of forcing function using that assumption as a linear variation between two successive time points i and i plus 1 then we express the forcing function and we know the solutions for that because we have seen it is this equilibrium equation will have a solution which is a combination of three different components first the free vibration then the force vibration with a constant force and then with a ramped force for each of them we know the solution and that is how we actually derive these two expressions. So, it is pretty st straightforward and this was developed by Nigam and Jennings and hence it is called Nigam and Jennings approach. In fact, the document uh, developed by Nigam and Jennings it is available in uh, web page. So, you can download I will also share that information when we will develop this uh, um, in MATLAB code in the third lecture of this series. Nevertheless, it gives a clear idea how to develop numerical solution for a SDOP system when we have an arbitrary forcing function. The only assumption in this case we have if we consider two successive time points within that we consider linear variation of force. Of course, uh, if the forcing function is not linear, so uh, if we have a coarser time point, so this delta t is very coarse, then we this assumption of linearity will not hold and for that what we need is a sufficiently small time step so that between two successive time point we can consider the variation in forcing function is linear. Now when we will develop this MATLAB code, we will compare that with our uh, previously developed Duhamel integral and we will see how it uh, accurately it can predict the solution. We will compare the response that we uh, developed for L centro ground motion if you recall and then we will see uh, how precise this uh, technique is. In fact, in the uh, next uh, week, next module when we will talk about response spectrum, we will use this Nigam Jennings code and we will develop the response spectrum. So, the takeaway point is from x i and x i dot we can easily find out the response at x i plus 1. So, the displacement and velocity. So, this is the takeaway point. Now, in an iterative fashion we can start i ranging from say 0 to up to uh, the t n the end point with delta t as the increment and we can develop the complete uh, solution in an iterative fashion using this code. So, that is the first technique what we have is called Nigam and Jennings. It is a very simple one but very robust we will use this for response spectrum generation. Now, our next approach is what we call central difference technique. So, central
difference. Okay, so again let us start with our equilibrium equation. So, we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f. So, this is our equation of motion, right. Now, if you look at this expression, what we have? We have x, x dot and then x double dot. Obviously, what we can do? We can express x dot numerically in terms of central difference. So, we have x i plus 1 minus x i minus 1 divided by 2 delta t is the first differential of x with respect to t and numerically that is the expression. Similarly, what we can do? We can write down the expression for x double dot and in this case it will be x i plus 1 minus 2 x i plus x i minus 1 divided by delta t whole square. So, what we do? We use the discrete values of x at x i minus 1, x i and x i plus 1 to define the first and second order derivative of x with respect to time. Now, this equilibrium equation, if we write down for the ith point, obviously what will happen? x i double dot times mass will plus c x i dot plus k x i will be what? f i. So, that is the equilibrium equation satisfied at time point T i. Now, if that is the case, what we can do? We can put these two expressions in this equilibrium equation and then see what happens. So, if we put that expression, so mass times will have x double dot. So, in place of x double dot, we can write x i plus 1 minus twice of x i plus x i minus 1 divided by delta t whole square plus c times x dot i. So, we can write x i plus 1 minus x i minus 1 divided by 2 delta t plus k x i is equal to f i. Okay. Then if you simplify, what we get? We get m by delta t square plus c by 2 delta t times x i plus 1 is equal to what we have on the right hand side f i then minus m divided by delta t whole square minus c divided by 2 delta t times x i minus 1 and then again minus k minus twice m divided by delta t square is equal to x i. So, what we do? We start from this equilibrium equation then put these two expressions for um, x dot and x double dot using central difference technique and then we substitute that in the equilibrium equation and then finally, we simplify. So, what is special about this expression? If you look at this expression, 
on the left hand side what is the unknown we have the only unknown on the left hand side is uh, x i plus 1. Apart from that we know everything we know this quantity on the right hand side we know the complete expression on the right hand side. So, ideally speaking it actually takes the format what we call say this is k effective times x i plus 1 is equal to f effective. So, this is a very compact form because in the static case we have k x equal to f right. So, we have now this simple equation which is a static equivalent of this dynamic equilibrium equation. The only unknown is x i plus 1. So, we can easily find out what is x i plus 1 this will be nothing but k effective inverse f effective. So, that is our x i plus 1. The moment we evaluate x i plus 1 just note that we can easily evaluate x i plus 1 dot and then x i plus 1 double dot that we can easily evaluate. So, not a problem. So, we can evaluate this two using this information and that provides us the complete solution. So, the solution at t i plus 1 is ready. The only thing is when we start the iteration at that time we normally start with uh, x i and x i dot, but at that point we need to also evaluate x i x i minus 1. So, if i equal to 0, if i is equal to 0, so we have to know x 1 sorry x 0, x minus 1 and x dot 0. These two informations are known we have to evaluate that we will do in a minute. Not only that if we need to find out at i equal to 0 what is x double dot of 0 we can easily do that this we can easily find out how we will satisfy the equilibrium equation m x dot plus c x dot plus k x at 0 is equal to your f of 0. Now, this will give you what is the value of x double dot and 0. So, we can easily find out that expression. Now, the question is how to find out this quantity because without that information we cannot start the iteration because the moment we will start from t equal to 0 we first need to evaluate this expression and then once we have that information we can easily continue the iteration. Now, how to do that for that the expression is again simple if you look at x dot at time t equal to 0 what is the expression we have x 1 minus x of minus 1 divided by. So, what we can write down what is x 1 this is nothing but x minus 1 plus 2 delta t 
x naught. And if you look at the expression for x naught double dot, so this is x 1 minus 2 x naught plus x of minus 1 divided by delta t square. And if you simplify this expression, what you will get x of minus 1 will be equal to x naught. I am just straight away writing the expression. So, you can derive at your end, I just leave that as a small home task. It is very simple half delta t whole square x naught. So, from these expressions, we can actually evaluate this uh, x of uh, minus 1. Now, once we have that, then immediately we can start the iteration and uh, we can successively find out uh, x i plus 1, x dot i plus 1 and these are the states at time t equal to i plus 1 and it continues. And as I have already told you, satisfying the equilibrium equation, we can also find out x i plus 1 double dot. Now, in this case, obviously, the accuracy of the method depends on the time delta t and uh, for a SDOP system whose time period is t n, delta t by t n should be less than 1 by pi. So, that is the condition we should satisfy. If it is violated, then uh, the solution will not be accurate. Keep that in mind. Typically, we have delta t, delta t is less than equal to 0 0.1 t n. That means, if we start with a SDOP system whose time period t n, it is actually 2 pi by omega n. So, we know the time period and within that time period, at least we should have 10 points and that is how we evaluate delta t. And if we set this delta t, then we uh, can get solution which is uh, meaningful, which is accurate. Otherwise, numerical error will actually lead this uh, technique to offer a um, erroneous result. So, we should be careful. Normally, in case of earthquake analysis, we set a time point of 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 seconds. So, that is sufficient for response analysis of the structures in civil engineering that we deal with. Nevertheless, if we start with a different structure, we first find out the time period. And of course, in case of actual structure, there can be multiple natural frequencies. So, that will tell which time period we should consider and then uh, based on that time period, we set this delta t, we should have at least 10 points within a time period and then uh, we can start this iterative pro procedure to find out the solution. So, solution is here. We start from the ith point, i is equal to 0 and then we get 1, 2, 3 as we keep on changing, we get the response of the structure. And as I said, we will develop the codes for all these uh, numerical techniques in the third lecture and we will compare the response with the known results that we have already derived using Duhamel integral. So, with that, let us close this lecture here. We will continue in the next class uh, on Wilson theta and Newmark beta. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.